Coming up, a cell phone catches fire while charging at a home in Perry County. And a bill is introduced in Frankfurt proposing higher pay for legislators. And warmer weather is on the way for this weekend. Your forecast coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. The Hazard Fire Department recently responded to a small fire inside a home. Chief Robert Key says with the help of a fire extinguisher, the person was able to prevent a larger fire from breaking out. But Keith says folks need to be cautious and aware because, as WYMT's Olivia Calfee explains, what sparked this fire is something most of us use every day. Hazard Fire Chief Robert Keith says it was a dispatch they do not receive every day, but it is not unheard of. We received a call of a possible house fire, and uh, when we responded, the fire was already out. They had put it out with an extinguisher, and... Uh, what had happened was a uh, cell phone battery was being charged and the battery swelled and exploded and uh, caught the phone on fire and the carpet on fire. Following the fire, HPD officials posted these pictures to their Facebook page, warning people about the incident and likely causes. If you've got an old phone with a, the original battery in it, that battery could have degraded and, and start to have a chemical change inside of it. Use the wrong charging cable, dropping them and damaging them, mixing a uh, charging block and, and different cables can, can cause problems. And while most of us are guilty of having our phones on us at all times, even while sleeping, Keith says you may unintentionally be putting yourself in harm's way. Charging them on uh, a bed and it getting under uh, a pillow or you falling asleep and laying on top of it uh, can cause the same thing to happen. According to a Pew Research Center study, roughly 65% of Americans say they have in the past or do sleep with their phone while it is charging. But Keith says there are other recommended locations to charge it. Charging on a flat surface like a table or nightstand or something like that. That way if it does, it's, it's more dense so it's not going to be the same as it lying on a bed or under a pillow. He also says leaving a phone in hot or cold temperatures can cause internal damage, creating a higher risk of a phone fire. In Perry County, Olivia Calfee, WYMT Mountain News. Keith says no one was injured during the recent incident, but it's still very important for folks to remain cautious and aware while charging their phone, iPad, or tablet. In Knox County, one person is dead following a house fire. Officials with the Bell County Volunteer Fire Department say it happened overnight at the end of Farmington Lane in the Alex Creek community. The deputy coroner pronounced Layman Collett dead at the scene. A Laurel County man is behind bars after police received a call about a truck being stolen. 30-year-old Patrick Anthony Sizemore was arrested just before midnight last night. Sizemore was also wanted on two warrants. Police went to where some uh, apartments went to uh, some apartments near American Greeting Card Road and found the Chevy Silverado they were looking for there. After entering one of the apartments, deputies discovered Sizemore had been hiding in a pile of clothes in a closet. In Pulaski County, a man is behind bars after police responded to a complaint of shots being fired. The incident happened Monday evening. The person calling in to police says he was riding a motorcycle when a man swung a stick at him and hit his motorcycle. The caller also says he and his friend heard what they thought were two gunshots. 60-year-old Terry Cook was later found by police. He was taken to the Pulaski County Detention Center. A Kentucky College campus has received a lot of support in the wake of a devastating murder a week ago. 18-year-old Josiah Kilman, a freshman wrestling student at Campbellsville University, died after police say he was strangled. Another member of the wrestling team is charged with murder. Students have leaned on each other and Kilman's family has joined them in the grief and encouragement on campus. It's been a painful week, but it's also been a week where God has been so good. A celebration of life will take place a week from today in Montana, where Kilman was from. Various people have donated money so that Kilman's teammates will be able to attend the service.
We are tracking a few sprinkles and patches of drizzle across the region as we close out your Friday up on first alert pinpoint Doppler. Zooming into the big Sandy Valley, a few light showers in Lawrence County, pushing into Johnson County, also Martin County, a first alert in Paintsville, also Inez and Louisa. A few sprinkles not too far away as we go into your Friday evening and a live look across the mountains. We are gloomy, also cool as cloud cover continues on this first day of March down to 40 in Irvin, 42 in Jackson, 46 in Pikeville. We should be in the lower 50s, so we are well below average on this Friday, but we are tracking some above average weather as early as tomorrow and mainly by your Sunday highs back in the 70s, but lows this evening back in the middle to upper 40s as you wake up and start the weekend. So thanks to a cloudy sky, those lows, we don't change too much as you wake up and start the weekend. But again, some warmer weather is on the way back in the 70s on Sunday, middle 70s by Monday. Also some more wet weather on the way for most of next week. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. Lawmakers are combing through hundreds of bills in the final weeks of the 2024 legislative session, and some bills even have to do with lawmakers themselves. Jessica Umbro spoke with lawmakers about these bills and how they'd impact members of the state legislature. My statement on the way out the door is, I think legislators deserve to be paid more. In December, Senator Damon Thayer announced he would end his more than two decades long career in the Kentucky Senate. On his way out, he wants Senate Bill 350 to establish higher pay for state legislators. With members of the General Assembly not in leadership positions receiving $75,000 and the Speaker of the House and Senate President receiving $120,000. I think this notion that Kentucky's legislature is part time and should be compensated accordingly is out fashion and out of date. Senator Thayer says higher pay would incentivize members to serve longer in the legislature. A similar bill has also been proposed in the House by Democratic Representative Josie Raymond. So what it does is standardize the pay rate across legislators. It also takes away any partisan influence in who can earn more money, whether they're in the majority or the minority. Which she says focuses on ensuring people from all backgrounds can serve in Frankfurt with financial stability. She says the bill would set a standard legislative pay rate at $60,000 with leaders such as the the Speaker of the House and Senate President receiving $75,000 per year. She says it would ensure legislators receive a predictable yearly salary rather than one functioning on a daily rate. Someone said to me it's a legislator pay raise and I said some people will get a pay raise and some people actually it'll be quite a large reduction. In Frankfurt, Jessica Umbro, WKYT. A religious group's video may soon be mandatory viewing in Kentucky science classrooms. A House committee just passed HB 346. Representative Nancy Tate filed it. She's played a role in many of Kentucky's abortion bills. Her new legislation would require schools to show high-definition videos of human development. The bill specifically references a video produced by Live Action. The group sp uh, spreads the religious view that life begins at fertilization. More issues with the state's new motor vehicle database. This morning, Madison and Rowan County Clerk's offices posted on social media about the CAVA system being down. The Rowan County Clerk said it was down statewide. It appears the issue has been resolved. Since the state rolled out its new motor vehicle database back in January, county clerks across the state have experienced a number of issues. A Kentucky mother says she's going to keep pressuring lawmakers to pass railroad safety legislation. Tanya Cerna lost her son Hunter in a train crash. She believes if the brush would have been cut back, he could have seen the train coming. Now legislators have approved a resolution encouraging the public to be more cautious at railroad tracks, but a bill to give state inspectors the power to order railroad companies to cut back brush has not been taken up by a committee. It is a very positive step. Um, there's many more steps that we, needs to come in the future. I'm going to continue to advocate. I'm never going to quit. 18 lawmakers have signed on to CERNA's bill. Earlier this week, a bill was introduced in Frankfurt to eradicate daylight saving time in the state of Kentucky. On our website, we are asking if the state should do away with daylight saving time, and the final results are in. Around 72% of you say yes, while around 28% say no. A flood survivor now has a new home with the help of two organizations and donations. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us how the home is helping 
with the woman's recovery. After losing her home in the July 2022 flood, Donna Jewell began to believe this day may never come. I'd had so many people tell me that if you're going to get help, we're going to help you, that I'd almost just gave up. A fire chief responded to Jewel's situation. Roussaw Fire Chief Greg Wilson told Jewel she would get a new home. Me and Chief Wilson have actually talked since the flood. Someone had told me to get in contact with Chief Wilson that, you know, he was helping people get homes or RVs or something to live in. Wilson started talks with an organization called Freedom Tiny Homes. This is the second tiny home donated. Miss Nancy Fowler, she's the one that's the head of it. And uh, me, and, me and her has been communicating since the first mini home that come to Breathitt County. That partnership led to the $36,000 home, bringing a smile to Donna Jewel's face. Excitement, joy, it means so much. Like this house means so much. No one has no idea what this house means to me. My babies. With her kids and dogs, Jewel says she plans to have the trailer near family. It's gonna sit behind my mom's house so that me and my dog can live in it so I can help take care of my mom. And Fire Chief Greg Wilson says he hopes the home is number two of many in the future. In Breathitt County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Greg Wilson also says the Breathitt County Judge Executive reached out to him and told him about Donna Jewell's story. Former state auditor and candidate for Governor Adam Edlin is continuing to work on solar projects in eastern Kentucky as the founder and CEO of Edlin Renewables. The Martin County Solar Project is under construction now, and Edlin says the turnout for recent job fairs shows the interest is high. That, that project, it's the old Martiki mine site. It is now under construction. I think people know that Toyota, which is a great global brand, agreed to buy the power manufactured there in order, in order to meet their sustainability commitments. And we had a job, we've had a couple of jobs fairs there. The first jobs fair uh, brought 500 people out, utterly overwhelmed the systems and staff that we had in place. It's been such a positive response. There are also more solar projects in the works, including on the old Starfire mine site where Perry, Knott, and Breathitt counties come together. We're talking about all these projects and more Monday night at 7 on Issues and Answers. We are tracking some gloomy and cool weather as we go into this evening. Your forecast after this break.